Hello everyone, this is Mr. Rios with another video tutorial. In this case, we're going to do part two on how to make a maze game using Scratch 3.0. In our last video, we created the maze and we gave the code in for the computer to know where is the exact location where we want this particular maze to be. Now, in this video, we're going to be working on the main character of our maze game. So for that, we're going to just move the mouse gently on top of the sprite option. And then we're going to go to the magnifying glass where we can go and choose a sprite from the library. From all the library available, choose any sprite of your choice. Any should work for this particular purpose. In this case, I'm going to choose Gobo. I'm going to click on Gobo, and Gobo will be right there, all my games. Please make sure you use any sprite from the library at this time. You could also use any sprite from the internet, but for this video tutorial, we're going to just be limited to getting a sprite from the library. On a different video tutorial, we will learn how to get a sprite from the internet. Now, Gobo is too big to go through my maze, so we need Gobo to be smaller. So I go here in size and I will change his size to probably 40 and I'll try to see if Gobo can actually go through without touching any of the walls of the maze right now it looks like Gobo will be still too big so instead of 40 we're gonna change Gobo to probably 30 30 seems to be a much reasonable size for Gobo to go through all the different areas where he needs to go through all right now we're going to place Gobo in the starting point. So we're going to move Gobo and we're going to place him right here where we want him to start as we begin the game. That is a very important thing to do because the computer needs to know where you would like your main character to start as you in, um, begin the game. So let's work on the location script. We go to events. In events, we're going to put a green flag block. Then we go to looks. In looks, we're going to scroll down until we find this block, hide, so that the computer can process the information for a couple of milliseconds, then show, and then go to front layer. Now we go to motion, and in motion, we're going to go to this block, the one that says go to, and it has a value for X and a value for Y. We will drag that and put that block between hide and show. Different from the maze, in this case, we're not going to change the value to zero. If we do that, Gobo is going to be right here in the center. And right now, what we want Gobo to do is to be right up here. If for some reason your main character disappears, you just look over here. And in my case, my main character is not visible. So I will just click again to the eye so he shows up again. That may happen sometimes when you're setting up your uh, coding over here. Okay, that makes Gobo just be there, but the Gobo does not have any clear behavior so that the computer knows what we want Gobo to do. What I want Gobo to do is to be able to go through the maze as I command him by using the arrow keys of my keyboard. So for that, I'm going to go again to events. I am going to have another green flag block right here. Then we will go to control. In control, we're going to put a forever block connected right under the green flag. After we do that, then we're going to go and pick an if then block, but we're not going to place it inside yet. We will go first to motion. In motion, we're going to put a change x by 10 in here, and we will go to sensing. And in sensing, we're going to look for key space press. And we're going to place that right here. So when we do that, what we will do is to change space for the right arrow. And then we're going to change X by 5. Then we right click on if, we duplicate this. 
and now we have the same script all together and then we're going to change this right arrow to left arrow and this 5 from a positive number to a negative 5. Remember that when you move in the x-axis, if you move to the right, you move positive, and when you move in the x-axis to the left, you move negative. Now, we're going to work on a similar set of patterns, but what we're going to do is that we're going to work on the y-axis. So we put another if-then here. We will go to sensing. In sensing, again, we're going to put g-space press. We're going to change this G space press to up arrow. And in motion, we're going to look for change Y by 10. So we have change Y by 10. And we're going to place it right inside. And we're going to change Y by 10 to by 5. Now we're going to right click in this last if, gonna duplicate this value, this script, and then we're going to change some few things here instead of up arrow. We're going to put down arrow, and instead of 5, since you're moving in the y-axis and you're moving down, when you move down, it's negative, so it's going to be negative 5. Now, I'm going to move this if inside the forever, and now, if I click the green flag, not only the computer is going to know that I want Gobo to be here, but if I actually use the arrows, Gobo is going to be able to move around. Okay, notice that even though Gobo moves around, Google can go through the walls of the maze. We need to fix that. And that will have a very simple fix so that Gobo doesn't go through and he has to go only through the spaces provided. How do we fix that? Simple. We will go again to control. In control, we're going to look for an if then. After we have the if then, we are going to go to sensing. In sensing, we're going to pick the first block, the one that says touching mouse pointer. We're going to put that inside the if then right there. And we're going to change this mouse pointer to the name of the maze. In this case, my name of the maze is Maze Game 1. Now, I am going to place that inside every if right under every blue block so that I can control the interaction between Gobo and the maze and block him from going through the walls. So I will right click in this if, duplicate, and the duplicate will be placed inside the first if right under the blue block change x by 5. Now I'll do the same thing again. I will duplicate this block and put it inside the second if right on the change x by negative 5. Now we'll go again and right click and duplicate and put this right under the third if and this if will go under the last one. Now in every space we're gonna put the same blue block that we have but with the opposite value. For example, if this particular if says change x by 5, and we're going to then have change x, but instead of being change x by 5, it's going to be change by negative 5. Same thing here. If we have change x by negative 5, and then we drag another block that says change x by 10, and instead of negative 5, it's going to be just by 5. For the next two if sections, we're going to put change y. You need to be very careful and make sure that you know the difference between the change x and the change y because the axis will actually allow the main character to move in the directions that we want. But if you do not put the same blocks over here, you might be actually telling Gobo to go a different direction and not the one you desire. So this was a change y by 5, so I will go to change y by 10 here. And since this is change y by 5, then this one will be change y by negative 5, which is the opposite of 5. And the last one says 
change y by negative 5 so I will place change y by 10 here and now place change y by 5 now if I start the game you will notice that Gobo can go only through the spaces but he can actually not go through the walls anymore with this we will be done with uh, the first part of how to make our uh, main character behave into the maze game please watch the next video tutorial for the next part of how to make a maze in scratch 3.0